Ain't nobody talk to us like how I'm talking to us right now. You a bodybuilder. If you've been on juice three, four, five years, boy, and because I'll tell you, I took pride in saying I took the less stuff possible. And y'all take it, boy. I'm telling you, man, go get a physical, get checked out, have them do a CAT scan, pay. Y'all, I know y'all already broke, but go ahead and lo get, borrow some money for somebody. Go borrow some money, get your physical. If you got to get a stint put in, get it. If they tell you your arteries clogged, which they are, you, I don't care. <laughs> Y'all taking protein powders, weight gain, roids, hella food. Yo, it's packed. I'm telling you. What's up, guys? Derek from ReplaceMartAids.com. Today, we're going to be reacting to why I almost died finally telling the truth by Cali Muscle. So if you don't know... She had a heart attack the other day caused by a 100% blockage and he survived obviously and that is great news but it also highlights the importance of proactive diagnostics and not eating fucking terribly of course. I did a video called Cali Muscle Almost Died, the real reason why and I basically elaborate on his age, his body weight, hormone use, as well as lifestyle factors imposed upon himself and lack of ancillary medication use, probably. So again, he was following a highly inflammatory lifestyle and doing literal mukbangs in his 40s, weighing, I don't know, like 240 shredded, um, while still on exogenous hormones and just living a, you know, like, what's the saying? It's like the candle that burns twice as bright, burn, burns out twice as fast or something. I never get that saying right, but you know, it's like basically that. And that's essentially what this guy is doing as well as following a highly inflammatory lifestyle that leads to plaque deposits. So for him, he ended up with a 100% blockage, which got him into the hospital and he avoided um, really getting any proactive diagnose, diagnostic work whatsoever, despite the fact that there was warning signs for years. So again, this is something that like atherosclerosis can be avoided even if you're a bodybuilder you can significantly attenuate the risk with proper ancillary use and diagnostics and imaging so leo did a video called most heart attacks are avoidable i would highly recommend you watch that too in addition to this video if you haven't seen them yet um leo breaks down like practical advice for like the actual medications that are useful potentially to bring up with your doctor so the discussion of angiotensin receptor blockers, beta blockers, lipid modulation tactics using statin therapy, ezetimibe, um, PCSK9 inhibitors. These are all things that bodybuilders should be seriously evaluating as like real ancillaries, not your fucking aromatase inhibitors and shit. Like these are the real ancillaries in bodybuilding that nobody really uses. So anyways, Callie came out with the video, Why I Almost Died. I have not watched it yet. And let's see if he addresses any of this stuff or if there's new information that's come to light. I may skip around a little bit because the video is almost 20 minutes and you can imagine with my commentary, this one might be a fucking hour if I watch the whole thing. So I'm gonna put it on 1.25 times speed and maybe jump around a little bit. So here we are guys in my office. Excuse it, it's messy. Uh, you know, got to we, we got show the Gucci though right quick. <laughs> Got to show the Gucci right quick, man. Hey, I'm living, baby. I got to have fun. That's why I always tell y'all, we got to have fun to the fullest. I got to hurry up and talk so I can put on my electrocution vest on right here. I'm going to show you guys. So this right here vest, I have to hopefully wear for a buff. It's called a light vest, and it can save my life. Look at here. They should have had that. Get, get me on there, man. <laughs> get me on there, light vest. Come on, put a real <laughs> on there, man. Put a real <laughs> on there, man. Come on, man. Oh, oh, gee. They was in the hospital like, oh, the nurses. Nurses was like, does somebody look like you in here? Hey, baby, you know, man, too much testosterone is what it do to you. <laughs> we got the vest here, so you- Yeah, too much testosterone, exactly. That's unfortunately one of the main risk factors here. You gotta put these plates up in here, and that's what it- Probably, I'm speculating. Electrocute you, this goes around my waist, so it's gonna hook up to this. A shout out to Zoe for making this, man, to save people lives. So what it do is, just say so happy, I have a heart attack. God willing, don't let it happen again. But I'm up and I'm aware. I can hit this button and cut it off so it don't go off. In the event I pass out, it acts as if it's the ambulance or something. It shock you back to life. 
and this thing heavy i could get my little curl workout so i could get back kind of fit you know what i mean i just want to, to body the bedroom for z so it's good that he's in good spirits you know a lot of people would be fucking traumatized right now but ultimately like what i want to see is the plan for the drastic change in lifestyle factors that will prevent this from happening again hopefully and significantly extend his life because again this is one of those things I can imagine, one of those warning shot scenarios where you see bodybuilders, they have a significant, you know, cardiac issue. And then, you know, they become a ticking time bomb for like a year later, essentially. Um, he's 46. He's too fucking jacked. He's probably using hormones to some extent. His diet is trash from what I can tell, or at least intermittently trash. And um, it's just not sustainable, as you can see. Um, and I don't know what kind of medications he, he's on at this point, but I imagine they would have put him on something pretty fucking significant because again, you don't just get plaque buildup with a 100% blockage out of nowhere. This is an accruement of issue over time. Like this is years and years and years of stacking on top of each other. The issues compounding where he could have gotten in front of it a long time ago and attenuated his risk very, very significantly. So it's not like this came out of nowhere. It's not just a result of the you know what going on right now in the world. Um, plaque buildup is a long-term process. My girl, you know, I get naked, see the abs. You know what I'm saying? I done did the muscle thing. This is dangerous, as y'all see. <laughs> <laughs> so we put that battery up in there. Gotta plug it that way. Plug it in there. But we gotta wait till it warm up. It must be back at Tosh because it take a long time. <laughs> y'all know back at Tosh take forever. Look at that. I've been dead by now, man. What they do? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I gotta press this back one and front one right there. Device. Press the response buttons. So I gotta press the uh, Kylie Kirkendall, man. It's my real name, by the way. I, these batteries last 24 hours, so I charge it once a day. Let me show you how the battery charger over here. Ooh, come on, it's So yeah, this is a battery charger. This one's fully charged already. So this is a little Wi-Fi thing that goes to this, to the office. So they know they're reading my uh stats at this office that uh supply this so i gotta wear this all day only time i don't wear it is in the shower man i you know this all new to me man i never uh would have expected to go through something like this i never did take it for granted either so yeah that's the machine man so how i wear it y'all pray that only be a buff Ooh, i gotta take uh meds twice a day and a uh, little bitty pills you know body is a big horse it's not they, they was at a hospital like uh you know you have to take these pills twice a day. I'm like, hey, little mom, I was taking that Winnie Var all at three, four times a day. Come on, man. <laughs> you just say used to taking Winnie and Var four times a day? Did I hear that correctly? Little like, uh, you know you have to take these pills twice a day. I'm like, hey, little mom, I was taking that Winnie Var all at three, four times a day. Come on, man. <laughs> it was almost, almost English, but I'm pretty sure. That was sort of what he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's up to God and my body to heal me when this go heal me, man. We're going to take y'all on a road with us. Life after a whatever. You know what I mean? For me, of course, it's life after a heart attack. Believe me, I thought about it. I thought about not seeing my kids no more. And that hurt me the most. What's up with the guys? Your boy here, Kali Muscle. This video, as you see the title, Why I Almost Died, man. This is going to be a transparent video that everybody been waiting 14 years for. For those who don't know my story, as a kid, I was in the sports, football, wrestling, track. Went to okay, I think I might end up watching the whole thing. Like, there's obviously not, like, a vlog in here. This is, like, him just sitting down and fucking talking the whole time. So, that's fine, though. This is going to be um, insightful into what got him to where he's at. Boom, boom, boom. Got in trouble in college. I went to Fresno State, got in trouble. Ended up going to prison. But I already went to prison. I already had... We put my 19-year-old physique in here. I always was fit, buff, like unbelievably buff. I look like a bodybuilder. Uh, when I got out of prison, I did 1994 to 2001, I got out. I got into becoming a personal trainer and a stripper. Did well with that, but I became a recidivist. Went back to prison four times. After that fourth time, I was like, let me try something new. Let me try some bodybuilding or something because I had a lot of money saved. That's when my curiosity of steads, pads, with pads, roids, whatever you want to call them came into play. A buddy of mine was like, if I did them, I would be a top athlete. So I'm like, shoot. You know, coming from prison, I talked down to bodybuilders and people that use roids and all that, like everybody else is probably watching. You know, I was one of those guys. That's why I understand you guys. Oh, them buff dudes on roids, oh, 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 you know what I mean? I got videos, you go back to my first videos, I'm at Diego's gym. 
talking crap. No. Lifting a 100 pound dumbbell no. behind my head, tricep extension. Them bodybuilders on roids can't do this. I seen a video of Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler. They had all these cars and houses, man. And I'm like, is money like that in bodybuilding? Shoot, maybe I should sign up. I know I was too old for football or professional sports. So I was like, let me try that then. Doing research on roids and all that, found a few people that could hook me up. So I started testing the waters. I had uh, bought all the books. I had Googled every, every day. I used to Google eight hours a day. So I did my first show, Orange County Classic 2009, won first place out of 20 athletes. I said, we got something here. So I just kept progressing with the studies, kept meeting people. Uh, it was going good. You know what I mean? I was getting buffer. I was making a name for myself on the internet. 2014, I did the West Coast Classic. Uh, won that heavyweight. So I contacted a few of the top elite nutrition experts, uh, gurus we call them, in the business. They sent me a list of stuff I would have to take a day. I said, this sport is not for me. I was still concerned about my health. I was up in age, I was about 36 years old. And so I was like, nah. At that point, I knew it wasn't a lot of money in bodybuilding. Well, it was not no money, be actually, uh, be, just be an artist. Uh, it's gonna hurt feelings, but it's the truth, y'all. So the thing though is, is a lot of those lists often don't account for the ancillaries that are going to be useful to keep you alive into your 40s and 50s following this lifestyle long-term. Because again, when he was in his 30s, despite the fact that he's saying, oh, I didn't, I didn't go through with it, this isn't for me. Presumably it was too much shit, too much food potentially too. He still ends up here, despite the fact that he didn't push the envelope like incredibly aggressively, presumably. So again, this is the kind of thing you need to be way in front of. Like if you're in your fucking 20s and think you're invincible, this is the stuff that rears its ugly head in your 40s and then you wish you did those practices in your 20s because it's all accruing in the background. No, that's why you need to buy the sponsor because you're broke. So I was like, nah, it ain't worth it. Let me just focus on my YouTube and social media. At that point, I was like, I don't need to be on all this stuff. So I got on a TRT, which for me was like one uh, cc of testosterone uh, every 10 days. And so I was able to sustain with that. Two thousand. The 250 milligrams or 200 milligrams every 10 days, you know, a lot of people would consider that therapeutic, um, although, you know, potentially high normal for a lot of individuals or just high in general. It depends on your own individual response. And that more notable is that frequency of administration is like very, very subpar. You're going to end up with a big serum concentration spike, which is going to be unhealthy from an androgenic signaling aspect from a putting you into a sympathetically dominant driven state, essentially having significant psychoactive activity in the brain, stress on the heart, etc. And then you're going to be crashing your fucking hormones at the latter half of that clearance, you know, even though the half-life is, you know, a handful of days or so, depending on if you're on an anthate or cypionate, you're still getting spiked in fucking giant dips when you're pinning t every 10 days. Like that's way too infrequent. And that's going to be a lot less healthy than having more stable blood serum concentrations with a more micro dose with the same weekly dosage burden, but more frequent administrations that are more representative of endogenous secretions. Like what you would naturally produce. You produce from your balls every fucking day, not once every, you don't produce a giant burst of test Every 10 days out of your ball sack. Does not work like that. 2016, I decided I wanted to have kids. So I went to an IVF clinic, did all the tests, saw that my sperm was zero. For me, I thought I was always taking a minimal amount of uh, pads or whatever, steads, whatever you want to call it, juice. So evidently not, it shut my sperm down completely. So I went to the IVF doctor uh, in Vegas. They gave me a package stack, whatever, of uh, to get my sperm back up. That's why you guys see when I was in Vegas in 2017, I came down to like 198 pounds. I didn't work, I didn't use no steroids for about a year and a half. Cause once she got pregnant, I was like, it's time to blast off. So my girl got pregnant in 2018, I want to say. Uh, that's why I slimmed down, trimmed down the video why I lost my size was during that period where I explained to y'all as well what I was going through. Uh, I was being transparent as possible in that video as well. So again, if you're wondering if TRT holds more muscle than it being natural, you know, I guess go watch that video. Like he elaborates on how he downsized significantly going from 200 migs every 10 days to nothing. Again though, he was going to like hypogonadal territory and perhaps, you know, not recovering to adequate function. So it's not necessarily representative of a healthy natural. But again, ultimately you have to weigh out the risks. Even if you're like, even if you're on like TRT prescribed from a doctor, 
the dosage burden, the administration frequency, it might not necessarily be as healthy as what you would have been otherwise as a high functioning natural if you had, you know, like high tier natural testosterone production. You've, you'd likely not be as healthy. You still have to be mindful of lipid parameters, still be mindful of the fact that you have big spikes in your fucking serum and then big dips if you're not administering frequently. The fact that you have a complete shutdown of your HPTA. A lot of things that are going to be affected, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, TRT is like the most healthy, sustainable thing you could be doing from like a PED aspect, if you even wanted to call it that, which frankly, it's like not really, but ultimately like you will sustain more muscle with a protocol like that over being a natural in general. You have no dips, you have no diurnal rhythm with pulsatile secretions based on the time of day. You have no dips in your testosterone based on lack of sleep, alcohol intake, um, bad lifestyle, dietary changes, calorie deprivation, none of that shit lowers your test levels when you're on exogenous TRT. So again, natural is not necessarily equivalent to the TRT in you know most instances. So again, even maintaining that much higher level of muscle mass, even like for most people, they're not going to be as jacked as Cali muscle. But for him, you know, maybe that's a risk factor. The guy holding like seemingly you know, 220 plus ish, whatever it is on his 200 milligrams or whatever it is that he was holding or able to hold, um, being that jacked, like, is that going to be, you know, harmful to your longevity, you know, perhaps. So anyways, I'm not saying he shouldn't have been on TRT necessarily, but it sounds like his protocol could have been a bit more dialed in, you know, just arbitrarily using a CC every 10 days. Is that based on actual blood work and biomarkers and, you know, symptom, longitudinal data or is it just like oh this is the fucking you know easy to measure dose just bam slam on your ass once every 10 days super convenient don't think about it much harder than that let's backtrack prison i did 11 years of prison top ramen noodles carbs bad food period that i think was the start of having plaque buildup in the arteries so i ate crappy for years i look good on the outside you know what i mean i would always say that my body could burn that stuff up whatever to bustle hey, all the top ramen all the crap food before we do the ivf i had a a hernia surgery and it was cosmetic. I got a physical. The doctors was mentioning some stuff about kidney uh, off, heartbeat. My blood pressure was always high since I was a kid. Blood pressure, I ignored it. I'm like, I was a pessimist with the doctors, conspiracy theorists with the hospitals and all that stuff. So I was like, oh, they just want my money. I'm looking healthy and they jealous. They trying to find something wrong with me, you know. They was always telling the truth. I would ignore it. And so when we did the IVF, I did the physical, same thing. Blood pressure high, not abnormally high, but high. 150 over uh, 90. Or That's high, bro. That's fucking high. So having that for years on end, plus plaque development, like this is a ticking time bomb scenario. Walking around this large, you know, it was bound to fucking happen. 80, something like that. And I would say that, oh, y'all don't have a big enough arm thing to put on me. <laughs> you know, you got to use the manual. So when they used the manual one, I had a perfect uh, blood pressure. But when they used the electric one, oh, it ain't it red high. So even to this day, now that I had this operation, all of them read normal and good. What this boils down to is that I always knew there was an issue. Oh, don't even let me tell you. I forgot to tell you guys. Edema. I always had feet and ankle swelling. So again, if you measure high... <laughs> And then you have a different blood pressure monitor measure normal, like you need way more data. It's not just the time you show up to the doctor. Like you need a fucking cuff that fits you at your home and measuring it over the week with multiple data points over several weeks and getting an average, not just saying like, oh, I uh, you know, transiently had this blood pressure and then, you know, that must mean I'm fine perpetually. Like that's not the case whatsoever. Or Vice versa, if you have a really high blood pressure, like you're literally nervous in the doctor's office or something, it may not be indicative of what your actual blood pressure is at rest when you're not like anxious as fuck about you being potentially unhealthy. So again, getting a cuff that fits and getting it at home and being able to take these measurements in all scenarios in a waking up um, before, I don't know, like after going to the gym, see how long it takes your blood pressure to get back to baseline, um, multiple data points, getting an average longitudinal data essentially to assess like what is your long-term average and then kind of like a basis of what is your cumulative you know like blood pressure over the you know span of several weeks what are you actually dealing with as a like comprehensive average essentially and above and beyond that like medications like angiotensin receptor blockers they're not just for attenuating blood pressure like they that's their primary 
reason they'd be deployed, but again, they do work to attenuate the risk directly on cardiac tissue of androge anabolic androgenic steroids. Like they are going to be very, very cardioprotective, kidney protective, and it's not simply mediated through um, blood pressure modulation, although that's the one of the main things it does, but it also modulates um, water retention. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system is not very well understood. And I think more attention needs to be drawn to it and educated about because ultimately this is one of the most cardioprotective drugs that exists in the world right now for bodybuilders. And you've even seen data on um, rodents using, like again, obviously there's tons of data on humans reinforcing its efficacy, efficacy and safety profile. But even at mega dose steroid studies in rodents, which obviously you're never going to put a human on a fucking like grams of shit and see what happens in rodent models. They do, though. And even on mega dosed fucking gear cycles, you find angiotensin receptor blockade is very, very, very potent in attenuating the uh, morphological changes of the heart. It started in 2009. Miles will tell you, my family will tell you, I'm always tripping on my ankles and feet. Lately, now that I think about it, they've been hurting. And that's what I always would tell Miles, like, you know, I'm having corns and, you know, my feet hurting. And uh, now that I think about it, it was science because my feet was puffy, so it was pushing up against my shoes. The cause of the heart attack, plaque buildup uh, in that artery, the main artery, uh, it, t it could take 10, 20 years to happen, which for me makes sense. When I was a kid, went to prison at 19, eat all that crap food, then compounding it uh, years later with juice, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's a combination, man, because uh, I don't have a history of uh, heart problems in my family. Doctors even told me at times my cholesterol was high. I had warning, that's the thing. I just wasn't uh, proactive about it. I didn't see myself and like everybody else as dying or whatever. They know. It's just we don't want to, ah, uh, let me go to the doctor, make an appointment. Damn, I got to get a stint put in. I, I got stuff to pay for. I got to do this show, that show. I got to live. I got to work. So put it off. You know what I mean? And you can't do that, man. Uh, God. This is good, man. This is like fully transparent and totally serious. Like I was not, at the start of the video, I wasn't really sure what to expect because he was joking, making fucking, you know, little jokes about literal VAR and fucking Winnie. But he's sitting down, he's telling it exactly how it is and exactly what led to everything and like totally owning up to it. Um, if he was on Telmasartan, if he was on Ezetimibe, if he was on a baby dose of a statin, if he was on uh, Nibivalol, like would these things have all have happened? Um, like they certainly would have significantly reduced the likelihood of it happening um, and the degree to which the actual events, you know, unfolded. But again, like ultimately these are very potent band-aids for the situation and may you know prevent some people from getting to that point to begin with like to be honest like some of the shit's so potent at working that you may end up with like a totally problematic free or issue free um lipid profile even while doing some of this shit but ultimately like these aren't healthy drugs to be on either like you don't want to be on this stuff it's not like a green light to then blast shit and live an unhealthy lifestyle like this is stuff that people are using as a result of like their lack of adherence to a high quality lifestyle. So you like, again, just because they attenuate risk in one certain vector, it doesn't mean that they're problem free. Like, again, you could have um, potassium issues with ARBs. You could have um, like inhibiting the synthesis or the absorption of cholesterol. Like there's other fucking downstream issues that can come from that. Very, pretty significant ones in some aspects. So these are not things you even like want to have to do. So ultimately, you look at the things that caused it to begin with and ideally remove as many of those things as physically possible. God definitely using me as an example, man. Oh, and I want to say, for all the people out there that think the mukbangs, let me explain the mukbangs to you. I don't eat like that or didn't or never in my life. I ate like that all day, every day. Okay, I don't think any of us like thought that he ate like that every day, all day, every day, but... Like they came out with relative frequency enough to imply that this is something he liked to eat, I imagine, and was, uh, I don't know, like if that's something you deem is like a, I, I'll let him fucking talk before I give my opinion. When we did those mukbangs, because a lot of people are trying to put the blame on the food, which, you know, top ramen, I can't say the mukbangs, bro. That was like once a month. And I wasn't eating all the food all my life, so I've been conscious about my body. I wanted to look best better than everybody that's why i was came to hollywood i was getting the most booking most commercials because i didn't eat crap food like that 
That's how I was able to stay in shape and look good and whatnot. It wasn't the mukbangs. People doing these videos, I see, oh, it was just him doing the mukbang, well, bro. That was like a, a bite. And sometimes I spit it out. <laughs> Okay, well, the whole point is your lipid profile is self-admittedly fucked. So again, if you're following a highly inflammatory lifestyle and your biomarkers are literally re representative of a poor diet model or a relatively poor one compounded with the anabolic exposure, like, it doesn't matter that the mukbangs are once a month. If you're following a bodybuilding lifestyle, the diet that you need to expose yourself to, eating that much food to sustain this body weight, the amount of protein you're ingesting per day, the amount of simple carbs potentially, like the amount, the types of foods and quantities of it specifically that you're ingesting are just not healthy, even though on paper they might be like clean. They're not obviously conducive to the most longevity minded approach to dieting. So again, it doesn't matter if the mukbangs are once a month and you ate it just like that intermittently or whatever, like that once a month plus everything else you ate all the time was obviously bad enough to lead to this plaque development. Like it's literally the representation of what manifested in the fucking hospital, dude. So like I can understand, I guess, why he's trying to explain that he's not encouraging people to eat like that. And he never really was. It was just for like clicks and shit. But you know, like if anything, I think this should highlight the importance of understanding bodybuilding dieting in itself, even though it could be clean food on paper, that quantity of food, the amount of insulogenic activity that's going on, like this is not fucking healthy at all, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I can't put the blame on mukbang. If anything, I'm gonna put the blame on Top Ramen. <laughs> I'm gonna put the blame on Mari Cohn and Top Ramen. Blessed and happy to be here, man. I look at my kids. That's why y'all seeing that one video, man. All I was thinking about was my kids, man. Damn, I'm not gonna be here to raise these beautiful kids, man. You know what I mean? Go have some weirdo with my baby mama after I pass, you know what I mean? <laughs> Raising my kids, man. Yeah, man, I hope y'all learn from this. All the bodybuilders out there, my advice, get checked. And when you get checked, what they tell you, go get it done. Ain't nobody talk to us like how I'm talking to us right now. You a bodybuilder. If you've been on juice three, four, five years, boy, and because I'll tell you, I took pride in saying I took the less stuff possible. And y'all take it, boy. I thought he took pride in saying he took literally fucking nothing. That's what I thought. I'm telling you, man, go get the physical, get checked out, have them do a CAT scan, pay. Y'all, I know y'all already broke, but go ahead and get, borrow some money for somebody. Go borrow some money, get your physical. If you got to get a stint put in, get it. If they tell you your arteries clogged, which they are, you, I don't care. Y'all taking protein powders, weight gain, roids, hella food. Yo, it's packed. Yeah, so Vigorous Steve had a really good video about this, um, about budgeting for high quality diagnostics. Because again, how many people will complain like, oh, it's too expensive or oh, it's impossible to do or whatever. It's like actual accessibility. I can understand the issue, but it's like, you gotta be, have some ingenuity and fucking creativity as well as like really pushing for shit. Like there's a way that certain people are getting the diagnostics they need. And if it requires literally paying out of pocket fucking cash, like you do it, dude. Like ultimately you should be setting aside a certain budget to allocate for blood work as well as imaging on a yearly basis, ideally at least, um, and blood work more frequently than that. Um, and this should be something that frankly, you should not even be buying the other shit if your budget is not topped up on this side of the spectrum with the diagnostics. Because ultimately you can't fucking bodybuild if you're dead and you would want your long the longevity of your career especially if you're a fitness industry guy, to be as long as possible. Like being mindful, even from a financial aspect, like it makes no sense to put all your eggs in this one basket and just assume based on your youth that it's going to be okay and I'll worry about it later. And then once you end up in a position like Cali Muscle, like he's fucking like rich objectively, but even him, he couldn't find the time or spend the money or the whatever. He couldn't even justify it. So imagine the average fucking person, like you need to do this from day one, Literally set aside a fund for your yearly expenses and you should be doing it concurrently while you're budgeting for your fucking bodybuilding stuff, you know, spend a bit less money on the GH, a bit more money on the diagnostics. Or if you're going to spend a certain amount of money on this, have a parallel equivalent being saved up in the budget for health. I'm telling you, be proactive. Do what them doctors tell you, bro. That's why so many body, I see all these people, even body, everybody do a video. If you ain't been in this situation, all you doing is speculating. I'm firsthand in this situation where I thought 
I was doing everything. I was cycled off. I get off the three months. That's why everybody be he got small because I get off. Then I get back big. Then I was, thought I was doing it right. Evidently I wasn't. And I know y'all ain't because you want to win a show. So you ain't gonna never get off. And guess what? Your system is effed off. R.I.P. Uh, George, Dallas, Sean, like all the people that just passed, man. They know. Everybody knows when they go get that physical, bro. They know. It's not a shocker. It's a shocker when it happened because you don't expect it. You never expect it to happen, but you really don't expect it to happen that bold. When it happened to me, like I thought it was heartburn. Went in and they, bro, they would rush me in there so fast. I was, bro, I was in the hospital like five minutes in surgery. Like it happened so fast. Like. I, Luckily, I was woke and I was able to think about my kids while I was throwing up like I threw up like I've never seen in my life, like nonstop, just like a waterfall. I feel sorry for the people who had to clean that stuff up while they was giving me surgery. Anybody on that juice, bro? You better go get checked out, bro, bro. Me moving forward, doctors say I can still do TRT, but we, you know what I mean? I got to keep my libido up, man. I got a woman 10 years younger than me, bro. You know what I mean? But what I am going to do every year is get a EKG, scan of my whole kidney, heart, everything, bro. Hey, this was a wake up call for the world, for me. You know, when nurses was coming in there, shh, don't tell my baby mama. You know, they was like, what is you doing up in here, buff man? You know what I mean? Hey, I had too much testosterone in my system. <laughs> you know, this is the most transparent. You don't just want an electrocardiogram. You want actual high quality imaging done of your organ systems. Ideally, something like a cardiac fMRI for your heart and an actual ultrasound of your kidneys and liver potentially, if you want to go like full board at least an echocardiogram of your heart as well. Um, but for like, you know, like an EKG going in, like when you're getting your fucking blood drawn and assessing if you have any like, uh, like AFib or anything, like that's not gonna fucking cut it, dude. You actually have to see like m from an actual blood flow aspect, do you have any inhibition of your blood actually getting to where it's supposed to go? And from like a morphological change and in inhibition of actual function from a structural aspect, is your heart fucked up? That's what you actually wanna know and you're not necessarily going to get that just through the blood work and a preliminary EKG. So just be mindful of that um, and take the fucking necessary ancillaries if you're gonna be doing this shit. You know, like ultimately uh, having a high quality doctor in your camp who understands this stuff um, and understands how to attenuate the risk understands things like the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, understands beta blockade, understands adrenergic signaling, androgenic signaling, and all of these things that are going to lead cumulatively to heightened stress response, like perpetually around the clock from being on high androgens, the fucking stimulants bodybuilders are using pre-contest, um, the kidney stress from fucking cutting weight and cutting water. Um, all of this stuff is um, cumulative, dude. And having somebody in your camp who's non-judgmental and understands this stuff um, is prudent and fucking critical. Now, again, most people aren't competitive bodybuilders and they might get the idea that, oh, I just do, you know, like I just use shit to, you know, build more muscle. And it's like a perpetual off season for me, essentially. You're not exempt just because you don't do contest preps. Like if you're on gear and you weigh more than like is otherwise healthy for your longevity, which a lot of people who bodybuild are frankly, regardless if it's fat or muscle content, it's all stressful on your body. Your organs have to work harder to support more body weight. The amount of food you have to ingest to support the growth that you're trying to get or you have already done to maintain that size. It's all fucking stressful and you need to be on top of it um, with the proper diagnostics and warranted ancillary medications if needed. So be mindful of that. Um, that's why I'm so prideful again in bringing services from Merrick Health to the public to prevent shit like this from happening. Video I did on this topic or issue, I'm an old man now, so I don't give a damn. Years ago, and most bodybuilders, they can't, they, they're not allowed, they can't say, you know, what they're doing. Like, like how many TRT clinics are gonna be like, oh, like, welcome to our clinic. Here's fucking 300 milligrams of test plus Arimidex. Surprisingly a lot. What, how many clinics are gonna say, welcome to our clinic. Let's see if you actually need hormone intervention based on a bunch of different contextual information based on your current situation, your lifestyle factors. Let's see how we can optimize your dietary um, practices, your lifestyle, your sleep hygiene. Let's see if you have fucking sleep apnea, persistent blood pressure issues. Let's see how we can introduce ancillary medications to make sure your testosterone exposure to date or you know that you're going to continue with or whatever may be otherwise less problematic based on you know certain exposure factors and you know preliminary blood pressure modulation issues or whatever like having somebody in your camp who understands this stuff and will keep you as safe as possible 
is fucking critical, dude. Again, like how many doctors even understand what a fucking like, okay, not doctors necessarily, but clinics, especially that are some of them are just like testosterone mills at the end of the day. How many are going to give you an ARB to begin with? Like fucking none, dude. Like this is the kind of stuff you need to be mindful of when you're going into it too. Don't just assume the guy knows what he's talking about. Go to a clinic that actually understands this shit and is um, looking out for your best interests from a longevity and quality of life aspect. is isn't just trying to throw you on meds that make you feel good. And like, oh, you're fucking 60 and now your dick works as good as it did when it was 20. Um, like this is the kind of thing, if you're even younger, like again, this is shit you need to be proactive about. Prevent LVH from developing, you know, before it fucking happens. This is the kind of stuff that ARBs and other medications would be um, useful for doing if warranted. Like me, I, why would I tell the world at that moment that there was no need? Trolling the trolls, I was having fun. Thank y'all for all the love, support, man. You know, with me, I know I got love, whatever, but this really showed that I got major love. I hardly seen any negativity, and that's the way to be in the world, guys. I know everybody wanna troll and hate people for whatever reason, but we in a weird time, losing a lot of people, man, and uh, love, man, show love, man. And don't be mad at a guy for having more muscles or more uh, nicer car, better clothes, none of that weird stuff. You know what I mean? Love, bro. Learn to love because you don't know when it's gonna be over. You know, and I'm prime example of that, man. That's even in my all my past videos, man. I've been doing prayers, speaking positivity and love, man. That's what it's got to be about, man. So I hope y'all youngsters, this mainly for the youngsters and the OGs, but mainly for the youngsters that's you know seeing this rise in the bodybuilding world, want to be buff, swole. My advice would be stay fit. Just get your diet on point. High repetition, stay fit, man. There's no money in that stuff, and you're risking your life, man. Sean passed away broke. George, broke. All them broke. Like, that ain't, bro, come on. For what? Women don't even like motherfuckers all swole up like that. At least not the super bad ones. Not the IG models. <laughs> they like you just fit, trim, with a whole lot of money and jewelry. And nice clothes. And nice car. Nice part to take it to late, late night. <laughs> but yeah, but I love y'all, man. And uh, hey, we're going to start pumping out the life after videos. And man, stay positive. Stay with love, man. We out, man. I love y'all. For more great videos from Kali Muscle, hit the subscribe button or click the video now. Damn, it's quite the outro. It's fucking cool. <laughs> so, um, okay. So anyway, that is... Uh, that was more transparent than I was expecting and I was glad to see it. And I don't think I can add much more than I have. You know, the conclusion is the same. And uh, hopefully you guys learn something and um, have some more information to be proactive about your health. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm and are much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, couple podcasts if you want to support the channel. You can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including Mayor Kelf, mentioned it earlier, for getting high quality medical oversight, as well as access to self-service labs if you just wanna get your blood work done yourself and see where you're at, just check what's under the hood, even if you're natural. Highly recommend getting preventative medicine and or proactive blood work to assess your current health state and uh, even performance metrics and whatnot. Like this is kind of stuff that will give you insight into optimizing not only your quality of life and your health, but also your mental and physical performance and whatnot. So anyways, that's it. Um, anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.